all day, every day, our fluid levels are in a state of flux. The composition of our blood changes, the interstitial fluid that bathes our tissues and cells changes, and the contents of our cells change. We gain and lose water, and we gain and lose solutes such as salts, ions, minerals, sugars, and vitamins. When with all of our cells hard at work metabolizing, we are consuming and producing various products that we distribute throughout the body, and we produce waste products that must be removed. Yet, despite all the change, despite the system being in a constant state of flux, our bodies manage to keep the water and solute balance within a tolerable range. Our body, our systems, our organs, and our cells work to maintain homeostasis. Water is gained by ingestion from food and liquids that we eat and drink, and as a byproduct of the metabolic process. Water is lost during urination, exhalation as water vapor when we breathe out, in our sweat, and in our feces. Solutes are gained by ingestion of food and drink, also from cellular secretions. We gain solutes when we inhale, we inhale gases, and as a byproduct of metabol uh, metabolism, the metabolic waste. We lose solutes in our urine when we exhale and in our sweat. Excretion is the removal of excess water and, nitri and nitrogen waste and other useless and harmless harmful materials. The organs of excretion are the lungs, the skin, the liver, and what we're going to focus on, the kidney. The kidney is part of the urinary system. This is the main system that regulates this water to solute balance and by doing so also influences our blood pressure and pH balance. So let's look at the overall system. Our urinary system consists of two kidneys, here and here, Let me change colors here, two kidneys, two ureters which carry the urine that's produced down to the bladder, and then the, to carry the bladder, uh, the urine from the bladder out of the body, there's a tube called the urethra. That's the overall system. Now within this system, these components, uh, again, we're going to spend our time focused on the kidneys and the function of the parts inside the kidneys. If we think of the kidney like a black box, meaning we can see what goes in and what comes out without worrying about how it does its job, then it might look something like this. As our blood circulates through the body, it's making deliveries of nutrients and gases, but it's also picking up all the cellular waste. This waste must be removed from the body, and that's the primary job of the kidneys. As the blood passes through the kidneys, it's filtered. Uh, the waste products are filtered out with excess water and we produce urine. The blood that leaves the kidneys has a very different composition than the blood that entered. Every bit of volume of the urine was at one time in the blood. So the volume as well as the composition is altered by this process. The urine is going to be composed primarily of water, but also we're going to remove all the metabolic waste like urea, other toxins, and salts and ions. So this system does more than just remove excess water and waste. It also adjusts the levels of certain ions and salts in the blood. Based on hormone signals, this system can make adjustments to ensure that the blood pressure and the pH are maintained. The point I'm trying to make is that this system is dynamic. It's adjustable. We know this. We know that sometimes we have to pee a lot. Sometimes we do small amounts of concentrated urine that's darker because it's, we're dehydrated. And other times we produce large amounts of dilute urine or clear pee. Now that we understand this overview of how the system, we need to go inside of the black box and learn how this very intricate system works. We need to study the individual fi filtering units called nephrons and see how hormones can adjust the, the functioning of this organ to a precise uh, amount. If we go beyond the black box, we see a kidney. This is the organ of the urinary system. The blood comes in, goes through these capillaries, breaks up, is filtered, and the blood that comes out through the renal vein has a different composition. The product produced by the kidney is urine, which collects here in the center, and is drained from the kidney via the ureter. The ureter takes that urine down, move that out of the way, move that out of the way, down 
around into a balloon-like sac called the urinary bladder, which then releases the urine out of the body through the urethra. But the kidney, when we look at the kidney, we see it's divided into two distinct regions, the outer cortex and the inner medulla. In this structure are millions of individual filtering units or filtering structures called nephrons. Let's look oops, at a, an individual nephron. This is the filtering unit and inside our kidney we have millions of these many filters. The job of the nephron basically is to clean out the blood. It's going to filter out water, ions, organic waste, and other waste, and adjust the composition of the filtrate and return about 1% to the blood. The unreturned water and solute makes up urine. Now I wanted you to think of this analogy. Let's say you had to clean out your closet. There's two strategies for cleaning out your closet. You could go through pick out each individual thing that you don't want, remove it, and leave everything else in the closet. Or you could take everything out of the closet, sort through it, and then put back what you want to keep. That analogy of emptying the closet and then putting back what you want is a better analogy to describe how a nephron works. When the blood comes into the ne nephron, we basically take out everything as much as we can. Anything that's small enough we can squeeze and filter out and put into this tubule. Then as we go through the tubule, through the nephron, throughout the system, we're going to take and put back into the blood those things which we want to keep. So 99% of all the material that's actually taken out of the blood here is returned to the blood somewhere along the way during this process. So by the time we get all the way through, we come down and around and back up, what ends up being released is very specific composition of filtrate, which we call the urine, and most of the good materials are per returned back to the blood. Now let's look at the anatomy of the individual neuron. We start with this capsule uh, called the Bowman's capsule. Let me see this up here. The Bowman's capsule. And inside the Bowman's capsule is a capillary bed uh, where this arterial coming in breaks into a capillary bed. And this capillary bed is extremely permeable. It's very leaky. So, uh, and the blood that goes into this capillary bed is under tremendous pressure because the afferent or the entering arterial uh, is dilated, lets a lot of blood come in, and the efferent or exiting arterial is constricted. So it builds up a lot of pressure. So basically we're squeezing most of the contents out of the blood. Um, so into the Bowman's capsule. From the Bowman's capsule, we're going to move into what's called the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal meaning near, convoluted means coiled up or folded over. We can see that it's convoluted. From the proximal convoluted tubule, we're going to go down uh, into this long hairpin turn. This entire structure is called the loop of Henle. And we break this up into the descending branch going down. We make the turn. And we have the ascending branch, which is broken into two parts, the uh, thinner section here, and then it gets thicker uh, up here at the top of the ascending branch. So we have the descending loop of Henle and the ascending loop of Henle, uh, and then we get to the distal convoluted tubules, distal meaning far, and in this case far from the, the Bowman's capsule. And the distal convoluted tubule empties into the collecting duct. And you might have inputs from other uh, nephrons here so that one collecting duct serves more than one uh, nephron. And the collecting duct empties into the center of the kidney which eventually uh, empties into the ureter. Now, whoops, now that just covers the anatomy of the uh, nephron, but we need to look at what's going on. At each part of this, from the Bowman's capsule, uh, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting duct, we have different processes going on. So at each stage along the way, we're going to be doing different things. Now we're going to get into the details of the, the, the nephron and what's happening to the filtrate as it goes through, how it interacts with this, uh, these capillaries in the next video. This video serves as an introduction to the system, an introduction to the anatomy, and uh, the detail work comes in the follow-up video um, below. Thank you.